So what I'm seeing at Paul Alto's local college is an embarrassment of riches that's causing people to be paralyzed, causing students to be over analytical. The embarrassment of riches is access to untold libraries stored inside humans where like Kobe Bryant, like a walking encyclopedia. Maybe you don't know what that is, but a walking library. And so it's an embarrassment of riches because the people that come and drop a guest lecture are all significant people. Whereas if you go to a college like the University of Illinois, you get two people per decade that are decently on campus doing a guest lecture. And the paralysis that I see is where there are 15 people coaching you during one class. I mean, imagine if you're uh, literally CS183B, there's 27 celebrity guest lectures. CS183B is in boy that Sam Altman taught. No pun intended. Imagine if you're playing baseball and you've got 28 head coaches who don't control your playing time but are trying to coach you up. You don't have one system. Your mind map is all over the map. And guess what your likelihood of success is? Lower because you're not Tom Brady filing information into a predetermined structure, which is the point of this video is is stepping towards a new destiny. And you might think Joe Dispenza is super uh, woo-woo-y, but then you can also go with the non-woo-woo book of Moonwalking with Einstein, where we're trying to put together a map. And once you avoid the step of putting pen to paper, your map is going to be non-existent an embarrassment of riches let's take the people who are dropping genius things into your brains via guest lectures via lectures and let's try to put a structure to it now the first structure is not optional it's basic basic the structure of PQRST and that's why I brought to this show and tell Tom Brady because Tom Brady reminds me to preview question read summarize test because Tom Brady the human that was named either before this Brady or after Brady in this time as a flat circle which is which is right on cue for PQRST which came first Tom Brady saying on the football field against the Kansas City Chiefs, we've previewed all these things, we've asked ourselves the tough questions, we've read and reviewed, now we just need to pass this test because we've summarized everything. He literally said all the components of PQRST not mic'd up when somebody had a boom mic pointed at him. So he wasn't mic'd up for the Super Bowl. That's just how the Super Bowl is. is there are these funnels, these satellite looking dishes, and they're pointing them towards people to pick up everything that they say. That's the first structure. So structure number one of you going to class is that you get all the content for class before class even begins by previewing it. So that way when you're taking the most mundane engineering class ever, which is going to seem advanced to other people who have never taken it. So when you're doing PQRST, you're previewing, hey, what do the first 20 lectures look like? Then you're asking questions. Hey, lecture 11 seems fuzzy. Lecture 17 seems fuzzy. So when the lecturer, not guest lecturer, the primary lecturer is speaking on lecture 11, 
collateral default rope to choke, for example, Stram GT353, you'll be able to sit at full attention because you have questions and the professor is going to have answers. What you're trying to do with this fourth grade reading level structure is not applying it to football where you're trying to get the defensive reads and and then the defense trying to hide their schemes you're trying to just unearth the most basic 1 through 20 which is which is studying math class before math class and this is not done in a uh, hallucinogenic AI format, Hallucina hallucinate, which is what uh, artificial intelligence does uh, because you don't prompt it, preview prompt it super clearly, is Tom Brady said on my pinned tweet, we have to take, when we practice our math assignments, our math gets better. And so what you're doing there is you're getting reps in. And this is not a hallucinated thing where I'm saying, hey, take math class before math class, or hearing, hey, Tom Brady said that he's repeating, hey, let's take math class before math class. This makes me sound like a crazy person, which I am absolutely not crazy, but potentially universally awesome. But, but that doesn't roll off the tongue as, oh my God, Thank you for being my fan. You're absolutely crazy. But they don't even say that. They're like, you're one of a kind. This is one of a kind, which is not one of a kind. It's this way all the time, which is when Tom Brady said during his Super Bowl press conference, pre-presser with Jim Gray, Jim, sometimes we have to practice our math assignments so that way our math gets better. That's the pin tweet. A pin tweet is something that I want you to focus on because I don't want you to think, oh, Larry's making 600K because he's got a 488 for an IQ. No. In fact, if you have a 230 for an IQ or even 180 for an IQ, you're in danger. You're in danger because you've got a lot of complex thoughts and are complicated. I almost said complicated complex complicated thoughts that are causing you to be paralyzed which is why at your school with an embarrassment of riches you have an embarrassment of riches between your ears because your dad going to MIT his safety school and your mom going to Yale her full scholarship school now you're Larry Chang and you're in danger you got a Yale PhD and you got MIT PhD between the ears. <laughs> Good luck. You're going to have multiple different thoughts. Solution. You toss, you don't toss them away. You don't destroy your brain cells. In fact, you want to stay drug free. You want to just set aside all the IQ points over 88. So using me, my IQ is 488. So I'm gonna set aside 400 IQ points and I'm just going to be Augie Garrido's meant E. Augie says, you get to play one inning. Okay, we're just gonna play in the one inning. I'm not gonna think my way into being smarter than Augie Garrido because he was like 70, well, he was 50, but he kind of looked older than he was. You know how like white people do. And so I thought I could outsmart him because I was an idiot. That's why you try to make money and succeed at school with an IQ of 88. So you're not rolling into physics class going, oh yeah, like every other physics class, I just kind of intuited uh, my way through it. No, you pretend like you're dumb and you preview, question, read, summarize, test. This allows you to take notes linearly because when you take notes linearly instead of a mind map, 
which people have, yeah, uh, moonwalking with Einstein. The problem with a mind map is you need to be able to, to dial in the chronological forward and back. Remember before when I said time's a flat circle? That's Joe Dispenza chapter 11, where, and also Tom Brady, time is a flat circle, and also Larry Chang, where I'm DJing time where I can go back and forward in time seemingly making time stand still so that way I can be a great crunch time player. It's not that I'm a great crunch time person. It's that time for everybody else is linear. Sometimes it moves too fast and you'll hear people saying, oh, the game kind of moves faster at this level. Well, thank you for telling me that you didn't PQRST that situation. That's what artificial intelligence is. This is what machine learning is, is basically prompt engineering. If you write enough if-then statements if in your mind, then you'll be prepared. So in baseball, you've got to know the situation so that way you can, you can, you can DJ up all the different if-then statements. So if I'm playing shortstop and there's two outs and the bases are loaded, I don't feel pressure. <laughs> I didn't I didn't load the bases. <laughs> I wasn't I'm not making fun of the pitcher, okay? I am making fun of the pitcher. But why am I feeling pressure? Because a pitcher loaded the bases. I didn't load the bases. At least I hope I didn't load the bases playing short. But now I'm thinking, okay, if I've got a ground ball, if it, the count's three two and I got a ground ball to my glove side because I play shortstop right handed. Am I going to have to throw it to first because the runners are moving? Okay. But if the count's not three and two and the ball's to my backhand, I kind of want to show the cannon, right? I kind of want to show the cannon by throwing it to first base. But my teammates are probably going to want to have me not throw it to third base, which also looks really good, but it also kind of looks like a big pussy where at least I'm gonna throw it to second base, right? Because running from first to second is probably gonna be a little bit slower than with a gigantic lead at second, running to third, plus my angle might get cut off. So if I'm feeling the ground ball deep in my backhand hold, hold playing shortstop right-handed, then I'm probably gonna be dealing with a throw to second base. That's the if-then statements that sports and being a student athlete brings, which is why this is an embarrassment of riches. And the person I recommend that you have the structure to is Mark McCormack. Chapter one, you're damned if you do go to Stanford Business School, you're damned if you don't. Chapter two, treasure management. Chapter three, pace copy. Chapter four, networking. Chapter five, mentorship. Chapter six, sales. Chapter seven, bang less, get ahead. Chapter eight, karma. Chapter nine, entrepreneurship. Chapter 10, counterintuitive truths and interrogation chapter 11 failing forward chapter 12 a dozen dirty street smart things chapter 13 counterintuitive truths that are absolutely true chapter 14 you want to go to stanford but then redact and pretend like you never went 